Every week I have a lucky draw for a practice IELTS speaking test with me and the winner was Al Sadig this week. Now Al Sadig is an IT student from Sudan and he wants to do his masters in the Netherlands and he needs a band 7 to do this. Now what I want you to do is I want you to look at Al Sadig's speaking and I want you to determine what score do you think he will get for fluency and coherence, vocab, grammar and pronunciation and then you can compare the scores you think he would get with the scores that I gave him in my feedback after the practice speaking test. Let's start with part one. Now I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. Do you work or are you a student? I'm currently a student and some institute that I have to support my degree because right now we are the modern world today. So we have to we have to be have some some knowledge. Actually, when we graduate from the college, you will not have that pill of knowledge. So you have to support it by some certificate, or you have to do practice in one of the fields out there. And what do you study? Uh, uh, my major actually is computer science. So right now, I'm doing some courses in artificial intelligence and machine learning this field. Uh, why, why did you choose to study that? Because in the future, we have to change our mindset. It's not like in previous. Right now, we are in the fast piece, modern way. You have to develop our brain. We have to develop. I think we are the future nation, so we have to develop ourselves for tomorrow. And do you enjoy studying that topic? I will absolutely say so. I love studying that topic, especially computer science. But in the future, I think. And what is the least interesting thing about that subject? Uh, can you repeat the question again? What is the least interesting thing about that subject? Uh, the least interesting thing about subject. So I think you have to study a lot. That is the least interesting topic have to study a lot because there are a lot of materials, so there are a lot of updates going on on that subject. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask you some questions about animals. What's your yes. favorite animal? Uh, my favorite animal, I think it be a lion. Why? Uh, a lion, because triggered me by her behavior, uh, her behavior on how she treated others and treated her calves and how it will dominate in the forest and in the field. And what's the most common animal in your country? The most common animal in your country. I think it will be like, so when we have lions, so we have zoo in my country, but uh, I think but I'm not much interested about animals. You know? Have you ever had a pet? Yes, I will definitely. I have a dog and cat. Why? Uh, because I think they are nice animals, so we have to put them in our house. It's according to my view. And do you think you'll ever get another pet? I will definitely so. So have to bring another cat. So there one cat I saw in my frame and I will definitely say I have to bring cats, new cat to my house. Thank you. And now I'm going to ask you some questions about headphones. Yes. How how often do you use headphones? I often use headphones when I'm studying. I think they will bring you uh, good, good sound quality. Do you so usually you have? Do you yes. usually have the volume high or low on your headphones? High. 
I like it to be high to receive the information correctly and clearly. And what type of headphones do you like best? Uh, what type of headphone do I like best? It is probably would be MI and Huawei. Why? Because I think they are providing, uh, this is according to my experience. I don't have experience with other headphones. That's according to me, they are best. Thank they you. have good quality sound. Quality. Next, I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before yeah. you talk, you have one minute to think about what you're going to say. You can make notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes, yes. I'd like you to describe a famous athlete that you know. So while Al Sadiq is making notes, let me just remind you that you can have a one-on-one -on -one speaking test with me just like this, and you'll find the link to join that in the video description. Okay, and you can start speaking now, please. Uh, yes. uh, the person I'd like to speak about him today is probably playing in Liverpool right now, Mohamed Salah. Uh, he's an Egyptian, and he used to play. For, uh, he's playing football. I used to, and ten, still not playing football in uh, Liverpool Premier League. Uh, he's a wonderful player. He has done a lot to Liverpool. I think he deserves uh, name that they are giving him right now, Mo Salah. Uh, he's playing in the Liverpool. And what what he achieved in Liverpool, I think, uh, what made him famous? It's Premier League in 2019, 2029, if the memory serves me. Uh, I think he's become famous in Europe and European and the Middle East, especially because everybody right now in my country know him. For his kindness, for how he used to play in the uh, in the team, or how he achieved to manage to play in, in the team and his uh, and his national cup. So I think what he achieved in his country, he used to play very well, and even in the uh, even in the Liverpool team. I think he's very good in playing. Why he's famous? I think he he's famous because of his kindness to others. And even he used to support his family, his friends, or everyone that he knows. Thank you. Do you ever speak yeah. about him with other friends of yours? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking about a famous person, and now I'd like to ask you more general questions related to this. First yeah. of all, let's discuss exercise. What type of exercise is most popular with people in your country? Uh, I would definitely call it football. Uh, they're not famous in the, uh, I will definitely call it football because a lot of a lot of people or plenty of people in my country used to play football. Good, so it's just very nice sport I see, and this very well. It's not like running or going to gym, also going to gym. It is. I think it's very good for some people is of a city that. They were there not just to go there. Call it football. And do people in your country do more exercise nowadays compared to the past? Yes, I will definitely tell so because uh, right now we are into, uh, we are into world that we are exposing to much food and disorder. So I think they have to go to gym and to manage our body to get fit. Why do you think some people are so enthusiastic about doing exercise? I think they are enthusiastic about 
their temp their self because uh, they have to good body and shape and body so and they are more into their body than practicing outside in the game or sport they, they have to look physically good and some people feel it's unfair that gym memberships are so expensive do you agree with that i completely agree with that because uh, sometimes the owner they are giving prize it is very high for them even they are not able to afford this amount but they still have to go and work on themselves to improve themselves and why is it that school children tend to get more exercise than adults? Uh, because I think it is part of curriculum activity. And I don't know about other school, but in my school, it is part of our curriculum activity. So we have to go out and work ourselves. So I think they used to do this to stumble uh, the sport, to stumble the sport and we have to work out on the sport and they are not the good of it, you know. Um, ne next, let's talk about professional athletes. Why do so few people, yeah. why do so few people become professional athletes? Because being professional, it is, it is not an easy process. So we have to go through a difficult process, very difficult time to reach to the level that you require. It's not an easy process, so why few people go there, average their goal, and be famous in what they are doing. And what's the best way to become a top athlete? The best way I think practice, practice, practice will make perfect of us. Practice will be good at anything that you like. And how can we encourage children to become professional athletes? I think it is uh, it should be government initiative. So it has to maintain a campaign to teach the children the good of the sport and the good of and um, how to how to develop this idea in, their, in our next generation. And what are the advantages of becoming a professional athlete rather than pursuing a more conventional career? I would call it personal goal, actually. Uh, can you ask a sentence, please, that question? What are the advantages? What are yes. the adva What are the advantages of becoming a professional athlete rather than pursuing a more uh, conventional career? What are the main advantages? I think uh, you would call it uh, for something being professional. I think it is very good rather than. I think it's very good for someone to be uh, famous. Like, I don't get that question. Sorry. And thank you very much. That is the can end. You repeat, can you yeah. Thank you very much. That is the end of the speaking test. Yeah. Okay. So that's parts one, uh, two, and three. Uh, that's that's the full that's the full test. That's how it goes. Um, how are you feeling about that? Yes. Uh, is, your, uh, is your camera turned off at the first time to speak? Yeah. yeah. Were you feeling nervous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So there are some things you need to do to improve. Um, in fact, you do need to improve in all areas, but I can explain. I can I can explain how to do that. Um, so yeah. it seems. First of all, you're quite comfortable talking about what you do, IT, and you know that that yeah, yeah. A, that area that you obviously spend a lot of time studying. But then, when we move to other topics, 
you find it difficult to expand and develop your answers. So you, you were giving me a lot of short answers, which was not the case when we were talking about your studies. So the first part of part one, the first set of questions in part one, you were giving me good long answers, expanding and explaining everything. But as soon as we moved to pets and animals, um, your answers became very short. And that kind of continued throughout. Yeah. In part two, you did continue to the end. You were able to speak for two minutes, but there was a lot of repetition of your ideas. So you were saying yeah. things um, just basically that he was a great player or that he's a good yeah, player yeah. like that. You know, you said that a few times. That. You noticed that, but not always in the exact same yeah. language, but in this the same information, but in different words. So there's quite a bit yeah, of rep yeah. repetition there. And then again, in part three, so quite a few of your answers were short. And especially, even more so than part one and part three, you need to expand to, you know, like two, three sentences, at least in part three. So you really yeah. need to push yourself. And, you know, it's an English test. So it's not just about getting the correct answer. You know, there, it's not yeah, about yeah, yeah. answering the question correctly. It's about showing your ability, you know. Just so, speaking. yeah, showing, showing what you're capable of. And that first band score is fluency and coherence. And part of that score is to develop your answers. And you need to be able to develop your answers more. Um, that, But as well as that, with your fluency, there are too many pauses as well. So sometimes you need to pause to think of vocabulary and sometimes you need to pause to think of ideas. Yeah. And all of that is a part of the score as well. So for fluency, you get a band six. So okay. that would be, I feel part of that is you're very focused on the topic that you study, the topic that you want to do your master's in. But then when yeah. it comes to other areas of English, you're not as comfortable. So for you, part of it will have to be to broaden, broaden your vocabulary so that you're more comfortable talking about a range of topics. You know, it's very unlikely that you'll be asked yeah. about it's very unlikely that you'll be asked about IT in the test. And it's very, very unlikely that you'll be asked about IT in part one, part two and part three. In fact, it, it won't happen. So you need to broaden yeah. your range of vocabulary so you're more comfortable with more topics. Um, so that's the first thing. Also, you know, in part one, a good indication that your answers aren't long enough is if the examiner has to say why. Because the, exam uh, the examiner will only ask you why if you haven't expanded your answer. So that's a good little hint in that, okay, the examiner asked me why, that means my answers are too short. So don't, don't give the examiner an opportunity to ask you why. You okay. make sure to develop your answers more yourself. Um, do you have any questions about that so far? Uh, no. Okay. So with vocab, you're a band six for vocab as well. And basically what a band six is, you can communicate everything. You have the words like... I can understand everything you say. You're not using the wrong words in the wrong places. So you're, you're using, the vocab you use is accurate, but the problem is that you don't have the range. Yes, so yes, yes. we're like, like most of the language we use in every conversation can be used for every topic. But then to get a band seven, you need what we call topic specific vocabulary. So like if you're talking about um, we're talking about Athlete. he athletes. Perfect. We're talking about athletes. So s some vocabulary yeah. that is specific to that topic that you could not use to talk about animals or headphones, you know? So it's that's yeah, yeah. to get a band seven, you need to have like a deeper knowledge of the vocabulary required for specific topics. And that falls back into the problem you had with, with fluency as well. So, yeah. you know, both of those will improve at the same time. So, no, you've got a good level of accuracy with vocab. 
just not enough range um, would be the main thing. For grammar, you also get a band six. But for grammar, it's a bit different in that you're not consistently making the same types of mistakes. So with most students, what will happen is they, they're always making, you know, subject verb agreement mistakes, or they're always making um, article mistakes. And it's very easy for them to fix that because they can just focus on one area. But you're making, you're making quite a broad range of mistakes. So it, it, yeah. will, prob it will probably take you a bit longer to improve it. Um, I can always understand what you're saying. They're never so severe. But just to give you a few examples of, you know, the range. So there's yeah. one mistake where you didn't, you didn't include the subject in the sentence. So you said, in the future, have to change our something. But it should be, in the future, we have to change. So the, the subject we yeah. was missing. Yes, yes, yes. So that was, that was one one mistake now i obviously i didn't have time to write down every mistake i'm checking all your all your uh, areas of english at the same time but these are just some examples um the least interesting thing about subject instead of the least interesting thing about the subject so that was an article uh, mistake article mistake yeah. yeah um i was asking you about something in your country and then you replied with in your country instead of in my country so you you repeated your instead of changing it to my do you know what yes, i'm saying yes. i think i'm nervous so yes 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 that, that's no no i mean that's that's a very very common reason for making mistakes people are nervous yeah, yeah, yeah. they make mistakes that's that's completely natural um, yeah. The thing is, you'll you'll very likely be nervous in the real test as well. So yeah. you need to build your grammar up to the point where you don't have to think actively about your grammar while you're speaking. It just needs to come out accurately because you're always accurate. You'll make other mistakes. I mean, you know, the IELTS test. It is everyone's stressed doing the IELTS test. That's normal. Yeah. But it, you'd still need to to work on your grammar to make sure that you have the level of accuracy you need, whether you're nervous or not. So that's just something to keep in mind. You do need to work on grammar for sure. Um, you were talking about, um, I can't remember the name of the football player, <clears throat> but you said he still, he still plays there now, right? Yeah. Okay, so you said what he achieved, but it should be what he has achieved because he's still there. Yeah. So that was a mistake with tense. Um, everybody know him, should be everybody knows him with the S. Do you know that grammar point? So for he, she, it, you put the S on the verb for present simple. Can you hear me, Elsa Dick? Yeah. You okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. So that one was uh, everybody yes. know everybody know him should have the S so everybody knows him. No, no, exactly. no. yes, yes, yes. That's it exactly. Um, you said uh, yes, I will definitely say so. So I I asked you a question. Let me just pull it up here again. I said, do you think people in your country do more exercise nowadays compared to the past? And you said, yes, I will definitely say so. But we would have, yes, I would definitely say so. Yeah. Um, you said it should be government initiative. You're missing the article. You should have said it should be a government initiative. Yeah. So I've just made a list of the mistakes that I've pointed out to you. Yeah, and I wish it was more helpful than this. I love to be able to say to you, you only have one mistake, but you have a range of mistakes. So you will need to study grammar in general. But you made one mistake with subject, with subjects, two with articles, one with we. Pro, 
one with pronouns, one with tenses, one with subject verb agreement, one with modal of the ones that I noted. So there isn't a, there isn't a small pattern. Um, you're just going to have to work on grammar more generally um, than working on anything specific, which I know is not ideal, but that is the case. Do you yeah. have any... Do you have any questions about any of that feedback so far, Elsa Dig? Ah, uh, no. Okay. So last thing is pronunciation. Um, pronunciation is also a six. So that's an overall score of band six for your speaking. So overall, yeah. sc overall score of band six. Um, I know that's disappointing. That it's, it's not disappointing, actually. Okay, good. Just to have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's the truth, and now you know what you need to do to get your scores. Uh, I, so I appreciate yes, I appreciate score. that you take that. Um, okay. The problem, the main problem with your pronunciation is that you don't pronounce all of the sounds. Yeah. And it's especially like like a D where let's say it's at the end of the word or let's say foot. So when you say the word foot, you need to pull your tongue back down at the end. So you make that t foot. Okay. But gotcha. what you're, so the tongue has to come away to let the, the air out. But when you're making a sound like that, your tongue goes up, but you don't let the air out. So your tongue goes foot and then you don't make that. T. So you go foot, but you need to say foot. So okay. that's, that's the main thing. And that happens a lot. But when it happens, it depends on the combination of words in the sentence. But when that happens with three or four words in a row, it, gets, it can get quite difficult to understand you at times. So yeah. it's the same mistake. So it just depends on what words you're pronouncing in a sentence. But sometimes it sounds like you're mumbling because there are too many missing sounds. So if it's just one missing sound, I can understand no problem. But when it's two or three words in a row, and then I'm, I'm getting a little bit lost at times. Um, so let's say something like, uh, shape, you say shape, yes. you say shape, yeah. but you don't let the yes. air out. So it's to be shape shape your lips need to open again shape not shape um what you can do with that just like looking in the camera of your phone or looking in a mirror and just seeing if your lips open or not okay but you need to you need to practice one word at a time first and when you get more familiar with doing one word at a time then you need to start listening to yourself using those words in a sentence but go slowly at first and then as you get more competent as you get more comfortable with it you build up the speed again so you're going to have to start speaking slowly to work on your pronunciation another example yeah. is the word good so you say good uh, that you say that amount you say amount um, so then like a the sentence I don't know about, you say I don't know about, and you didn't say the ah, so it's just I don't know about, I don't know about, instead of I don't know about, and, and that with, with the missing sounds gets a bit tricky to understand. So that's the main thing with pronunciation is not not pronouncing those. It seems to be T's and D's at the end of words seems to be the main one. Yeah, yeah. T's, D's, P's, anything where you're meant to let the air out <clears throat> at the end. So like P, you close your lips and then you open it at the end. T, you put your tongue against the roof and then you pull it down at the end. So those types of those types of sounds, T's, D's, P's, probably B's as well. Um, and then there were two cases where you didn't pronounce an S sound at the end, but that's just, you don't say it at all. So like the word science, so you have that S at the end. But you say cyan. Yeah. You say cyan, not science. Yes. Do you want to try it? Yeah. Science. Yep. 
So you need that S like that. And then another yeah. example was, now this might have been a grammar mistake, but to me it felt like a pronunciation mistake. So you said, he's a football player, but you didn't pronounce yeah, it. No, no, not that one, not that one, actually. Foot, he's a football player. Um, so you need to say, you said he a uh, football player instead of he's a uh, football player. He, yeah, yeah. But I'm, yeah. I like, I have to make a guess. I have to say, do I think that was a grammar mistake and you didn't include the verb? Or was it a pronunciation mistake and you didn't pronounce the s? I, th I felt it was a pronunciation mistake. Um, you'd know you'd know that better than me. Yeah. Yeah. But it felt like a pronunciation mistake. So S's, P's, B's, D's, T's, those seem, those seem to be the sounds you need to work on. And especially when they're at the end of a word. Yeah. So that's the main, that's the main pronunciation thing for you to work on at the moment. So yeah. do you have any questions for me or sir? Anything you'd like to talk about at the moment? Uh, yes, I think it is uh, it's a good idea to it's a good idea to know your mistake and to work on it. So I don't know, most of the students, I think they feel frustrated about where they are learning. Uh, I think they feel frustrated that, that I have that have made very a lot of mistakes. But I think it is good for us to learn from it. You know, Absolutely. I think it is good. Uh, yeah, 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 we have to learn from our mistake. I think you have to post this video to to get more about the mistake that I've made. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's brilliant. Um, I mean, taking feedback the way you're taking feedback, that's genuinely the sign of a student who will get their scores. A student who can look at f negative feedback as a positive is always going to have the attitude required to get their IELTS scores. So I'm really glad to hear that. That puts you in a very good position. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot from that. And also make sure to sign up for the Lucky Draw yourself with the post that you will find on my YouTube channel and my Facebook page every Sunday.